So hello and welcome back and continuing this um, short series that I'm doing on self-talk. So today I'm going to be talking about self-talk sense solutions and this is part one of a two-part little series, okay? So up to now we've talked a fair bit about self-talk and how you can change that. So taking that a step further, consider all the possible solutions that could help you to change the reality of any thought that you don't want to have in your life. So it all starts with thinking, then knowing that you can change the way you think, or at the very least, be willing to give it your very best shot. So what I want to do today is share with you some very simple but effective ways to begin changing your internal dialogue on the fly. Now, what I've said previously is that this type of talk, self-talk, becomes very habitual and it can be difficult to change it. So you have to find ways of quickly interrupting that pattern of thinking every time it happens. So I've got one called the gotcha technique. That's actually very, very simple, but it's a very effective tool. And it can be used for negative self-talk and limiting beliefs all the time. Now, it is my little invention. It's my little invention, gotcha. Um, but it is based on the pattern interrupt model in NLP. So the first part is that you get used to listening to your inner dialogue. I mean, the first part of the process of, you know, this whole thing about self-talk and inner dialogue is that you start getting used to listening to it. You get familiar with it. You have the awareness around it. The next step that I covered in this series was you then start questioning the value and the validity of these statements that you keep saying to yourself or these feelings you keep having. You question them. And... The next step then is to create a much more empowering statement that you want to use instead. So then once you identify the thought and you realize it and you know it's not serving you, you then every time you start to hear the negative old thought come up, you immediately interrupt the thought by exclaiming, gotcha. You do this every time you catch yourself saying or thinking anything negative or limiting in your mind. And say it with a feeling of triumph, you know, clap your hands together, do it very loud if you're alone, or imagine shouting it out loud if you're, you know, in company and you don't want people to think you're a complete nutcase. So you don't want to do it unless you, you know, you're in a safe place to do that. Now, another thing you can add a little bit more dimension to this is you can, when you think it, you can imagine a little cartoon character in your mind and imagine him or her jumping out from a bush, shouting, gotcha, every time. And you can take it even further. You can imagine this little cartoon character bashing the negative words with a hammer or blowing them up, you know, with an acne explosive bomb or something so that you just have a bit of fun with it as well. You know, it will be kind of your inner detective will find this sort of funny. You're counterbalancing a limiting belief or a thought. And then what you do is you give yourself a new phrase. And to make this easy to transition, you preface it with, I now choose to think, feel or believe whatever the new more empowering belief is. So if you think, for example, you're always thinking, oh, I'm, I'm useless at whatever, because you've always been told this, or you're no good, nobody values your opinion. Let's say you've been told that a lot by a parent growing up or by your current or ex-partner, narcissistic partner. Yeah, nobody cares what you think. Who thinks, you know, who values your opinion? You start to think nobody cares what I think. Nobody values my opinion. So as soon as you have that thought, you go, gotcha. And you say, no, I'm, no. Is this true? Where did I get this belief from? And you examine it and go through the process I've talked about in the previous videos. And then you say, okay, I now choose to believe, you can say believe, 
to think, to feel, any of those or all three of them. I now choose to believe that my opinion is valuable, that I am valuable. And you just do this every time. In the beginning, it might be quite exhausting, but what that will do is make you realize just how much time you're spending thinking and talking and feeling negatively about yourself, okay? Now, this process, once you get used to it, it's actually important to keep going through this process as a lifetime commitment. And I say this because even when you're in a super positive zone, you are much more healed, you can and will slip up. And, you know, I, I still catch myself out. You know, just this morning I was setting a cup of coffee down on my desk and I spilled some onto the coaster. And straight away, what do I think? Oh, you idiot. Oh, you stupid. Stop. I very quickly said, gotcha. Or you can say stop. I like stop too. Stop's quite powerful. And then you just say to yourself, no, you're not an idiot. Okay, so you spilled a bit of coffee, big deal, you know, no harm done. Wipe it up. The world's not going to stop spinning on its axis. So you just kind of have to be like that with yourself. Don't let yourself beat yourself up, okay? Okay. Um, now, the next one I'm going to talk about is a really, really interesting one. And I had a lot of struggle around this when I first came across it because I thought, no, that's not right. I don't believe that. And it's not fair and la, la, la. But so if you feel a reaction to it, just, just ask yourself why. And you very probably will, because when you've been dealing with a narcissist, I totally understand. But just let's let's put that kind of left of center just for a while okay so the question to ask yourself is are you a real complainer god knows when you're with a narcissist <laughs> you deserve to be but as i said put that aside for the minute now i know because i used to be once upon a long time ago and if i'm really honest i still do complain about stuff but as soon as i hear myself you know, complaining, I'll hit myself up with gotcha or with stop. Because basically, it's human nature to complain. And I'll talk a little bit about the psychology around that. So it is very normal to complain, but we just need to keep it in check. So there's a PhD and professor of psychology at Clemson University, and his name's Robin Kowalski, and he studied this a lot. Uh, sorry, not he, it's a she. Robin, it's a she. Um, and she said everyone complains at least some point, at least a little. And she went on to define in her study and research three different types of complainers. So venters are dissatisfied people who just don't want to hear solutions, however brilliant the solutions might be. Now, of course, <laughs> you can say absolutely this will apply to an awful lot of narcissists, a lot of these will. But I'm, again, reminding you, just put that to the side for the moment. I want you to think about this for yourself and not just for yourself and not for the narcissist, because we know the narcissist is going to hit all these buttons. But are there other people in your life? Are you recognized? It's about recognizing the patterns, okay, in yourself and in other people, okay? Now, the next one is chronic, chronic complainers. And they are people who are living in a constant state of complaint. And they ruminate on the same problem over and over and over again. And again, narcissists, yeah, we all know narcissists who tick this button. And then we have sympathy seekers. And these people are always looking, of course, for sympathy. Now, these types fit into, you know, what I call a victim mentality category. But of course, they also fit the vulnerable narcissists, you know, the victim narcissists. Um, very, very easy to see how they fit into these categories. But it's useful to be aware of these definitions because you can know yourself oh yeah do I complain a lot do I, is any of this applicable for me can I start looking at my world differently or and they may not apply to you I'm not saying that they will but just be aware 
But if they don't, well and good, but you will be able to see this pattern, these behaviors in other people when you're aware of them, okay? So this in turn actually can help you to focus on not being like them. And I bet, you know, if you think about your circle of friends now, your family, your friends, just think of who can you fit? Who do you know that fits those different profiles? Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about, this is actually quite a challenging one. It's quite fun, though, is what's known as a complaint fast. This is a way to really expand your thinking and, you know, understanding of where you are emotionally in your life. And it's one that I learned from super coach and author Michael Neal. And he advises you to go on a complaint fast. Now, try to go one week without complaining. Now, I think one week is a huge stretch to go from zero to one week. Forget it. Try it for one day. Now, again, I know that if you are dealing with a narcissist, this is going to be a very, very tall order. But... Try it anyway, because it will bring very much into focus just how much energy you are spending on complaining and thinking about the narcissist. If you are no longer with the narcissist, but they come into your head a lot and you still find yourself ruminating and you know going back over it, over it, over, over it, which is what ruminating is, um, try not to do it for a day. Now, believe me, you will find this a lot more difficult than you think. You know, I still can't do it for a whole day. There was something I was complaining about, but these are minor things, you know. Um, and I'm not a habitual complainer. I always try to see the good and the bright side and all of that. But I still, I still find myself doing it, you know, I, a lot better. Um, what Michael advises is that as soon as you hear yourself complaining, and this is where it gets fun, you have to go back to the beginning, basically, and start all over again. So if you've gone all day, you know, six, eight hours, and you haven't complained, and you're like, wow, yeah, I'm so proud of myself, that's great. But then in the next hour, you find yourself back complaining. You basically have to write that day off and start again the next day. And Michael said that it took him the best part of a year to actually get to the point where he could do it. So it's very, very challenging, but it really does make you think. And if you keep it up, you will really find that it helps you, you know, to, to not automatically think negatively. And one small example I can give you from, you know, my personal life, I was out hiking um, not long after I first learned this trick and I almost slipped, you know, on an awkward part of the trail and I always use hiking sticks and so my hiking sticks kind of saved me. But my initial reaction on that feeling of, you know, almost going to fall was, oh, then a curse word came out. Okay, it wasn't the worst in the world, but still. But I managed to stop myself before I kind of went into the usual that you would do. And I said, thank God I didn't fall. And I repeated that three times. Now, the next time it happened, again, I did exactly the same thing. Thank God. Thank you, God, that I didn't fall. Thank you for keeping me upright. Thank you. Thank you, hiking sticks. And on you go. And I did it few more times and what happens now to me is if I slip lose my footing and I think I'm going to fall I have no negative thought at all it's like it's a clean slate I've wiped that reaction out of my brain altogether so usually I'll rebalance it myself and I now think how great that I don't immediately go into a negative pattern a negative thought and then I will usually say, you know, thank, thank you, thank you, Lord, just to show gratitude. So it really does work, surprisingly. Um, so, you know, when you start seeing these things for yourself, if you start trying some of these tips I'm sharing with you, 
this really brings your focus to yourself and what's going on in your mind and how your thoughts are shaping your day and your feelings and your world, to be honest. So try some of these and see what happens for you. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about, excuse me, is how to continue with that process of helping you change your thinking. So there's four questions that you can ask yourself, okay? And the first one is, when you're thinking about a negative situation, what you can ask yourself is, what can I do to help change the way that I think about this? And this is really up to you to dig deep on this because you're the only one who can change the way you think. So ask yourself that question and see what creative answers you can come up with. And I'm going to share with you two very powerful ways to help you with this. So let's say that the thought is a really stubborn one. And you keep having that thought over and over again, and it just won't go away, you know. So try to break out of that prison by just try, try saying something different to yourself. So say to yourself, in all honesty, well, it could be worse or it could be better. So try those two suggestions. It could be worse or it could be better. Try it on a very persistent, stubborn thought and see for yourself how simple it is to view any negative situation with those thoughts. Because what happens is when you say, well, it could be worse, it's kind of a little psychological trick that you're playing on your brain. You're acknowledging that actually it's not as bad as it could be. And by saying, well, it could be better, you're acknowledging that it isn't that bad either. Okay, there's room for improvement, but it's not a constant. It's not always going to be so bad. So this is a very simple way to shift your perspective around any thought or feeling that you have in any given moment that you don't want, okay? So do try that and let me know how you get on with that. Now, the next question to ask yourself is, where's the good in all this thinking? And obviously I'm talking about the negative thinking, the negative feeling, the negative, the rumination. When you put this one under the microscope, you might actually find it's funny because when you really realize that negative thinking has so little value for you, you know, you, you think, well, yeah, why, why am I doing this? So ask yourself that question several times and see if you can come up with any reason why it's better for you to keep thinking this way versus stopping thinking this way. And the chances are, you know, nine times out of 10, there are going to be none. So ask yourself, why do I keep doing it? It's no good for me. Maybe I should just stop. You can think even deeper on that question with another question, and that is, is thinking like this helpful? Is this helpful to me in any way? So it's another very simple question, similar to the ones we've just talked about. But just ask yourself the question. Ask yourself, okay, is this helpful in any way? Is this helping me in any way? And again, the chances are most of the time it's not helping you. It's not helping you and you're just stuck in this loop of negative thinking. And you can choose to, you know, to, to have a different thought, to say stop, to say gotcha, say no, I don't want to keep doing this. So change it out in, in favor of something more valuable and that serves you better. Now, one more question you can ask yourself is looking back over everything you know and you've felt and experienced, particularly relating to one particular thought, one memory that you keep going over that's particularly troublesome or stubborn, is ask yourself what have I learned here? And just tune in. 
you know? So maybe a negative situation occurred and maybe it's not even worth saying maybe when we're dealing with narcissists because we know that tons of them occurred, all negative, but maybe there was something valuable in it all that was there to teach you something, to teach you a deeper, valuable lesson about yourself. So take whatever the lesson was. Say, okay, looking back at that now, I can now see that I was codependent, for example. This is one of the lessons that I, I know a lot of people learn. A lot of people say, um, looking back, I realized just how little self-worth I had. Looking back, I realized I didn't know how to say no. Looking back, I realized I was such a people pleaser. Looking back, I realized, and so on. So by looking back, you can very often find a lesson that's a deep, powerful, important lesson for you to know about yourself. So you take that lesson, you say, okay, that helped me to understand more about who I am. That's helped me to understand that I don't want that in my life. But that isn't me valuing myself. And I'm prepared to just let that go. I'm going to take the lesson and I'm going to move on from it. From it. So don't keep going back over the old ground. So if you pick apart memories like this and feelings as connected with them, and this does take work, you know, I know it takes work. You will get to the bottom of what's going on for you. So... What I want to say is, you know, the things I'm sharing with you, these are steps that are just the beginning of your journey to learning how to, he um, to heal your life and to change your life. Because this deep inner healing needs to be done by you, you know, from within. Um, you know, I've got a lot more ground to cover that I want to share with you over the, the next several weeks with series of um, videos that I'm doing for you. But I don't want you to think that I'm papering over cracks. I'm not suggesting that this is easy by any means. And I, you know, I don't want you to pretend that everything is great and you're fantastic and the world is perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's not and it isn't easy. We all have to learn to deal with the ups and downs in our lives. And particularly when you've been involved with a narcissist, you know, your challenges are going to be much bigger and much tougher than for a person who has not had to deal with them. But all these videos that I'm doing are aimed at helping you to build a new foundation for your thinking, one that will help you shatter limiting beliefs and negative thoughts and painful past memories. And building this new belief structure will make you ultimately much, much stronger and far less likely to ever be manipulated by a narcissist in future, okay? So no papering over cracks, you know? If you keep following my videos, you will learn a lot of skills to help you feel stronger and more confident in any situation going forward. So I always say, make notes on everything. If you didn't, then go back over the video, make notes on anything that kind of jump out for you that you think, yeah, that sounds good to me. That resonates with me. I really want to give that a try. And do that and then, you know, come back and let me know how you got on. Okay. Now, if you want to fast track your healing journey, then connect with me. And I'm going to put some links at the end of the video on how you might want to do that. Okay. Um, tomorrow is the fifth video in this very short little, um, little self-worth sequence um, on self-talk. Um, so I'm going to be covering some simple examples of how you can actually change your negative self-talk into positive. And I've touched on that briefly, but I want to go into a little bit more detail with you tomorrow about how you're going to do that. So don't miss that. Tune in and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I do appreciate your time and I hope you found that helpful. Now, if you'd like to see more videos, click subscribe and hit the notification button so you get alerts when I post new videos. 
So I'm Maria McMahon, and if you'd like to know more about what I do and connect with me, then check out the links. I'll put them below the video and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very, very much.